Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now, 2023 has started off with the bulls scampering for cover and the Indian market seeing a sharp 1.5% knockdown in the first week of the year. Now, in a year that has begun with many headwinds like higher interest rates, lower growth, big tech layoffs globally and a risk aversion towards risky assets, we try and go back to some basic investing principles to help investors wade through the storm. Joining me today on the show and in the studio is veteran and popular investor Basant Maheshwari. We will be talking about 10 investment lessons that you need to keep in mind in what promises to be a very volatile year. Basan, thank you so much for being with us here. Uh, you know, before I start with the investing lessons, this is a really tough market, right? It seems to be quite tricky. How are you feeling about it? I mean, we're feeling very bad about the market because whenever you don't make money, you feel bad. Last year has been very bad for everyone and there's a few guys who would have got it right. But some things in life don't have a recourse. You have to feel bad to feel good. So that's my theory. You feel bad, you, do, you lose a sleep once a week, that's fine. Just survive, stay there, you're going to make money again. So you don't get off the roller coaster, you ride both the ups and the downs is what you're saying. Because, I mean, in a tricky market like this, some people have the temptation to, to sort of book whatever profits they have, sit on cash. You don't advise that. If you miss the downside, you will also miss the upside. Because the market is not going to invite you saying that, hey, the party is starting again, why don't you join us? So I've seen so many people who book out early, they don't get back in. So the only option, it looks very difficult, it looks painful, there's trauma, there's pain, there's too much of grief, but that's the only way out. You have to take the pain for the gain. Okay, so as they say, the darkest hour is the one before dawn, right? But let's start with some themes. There are some basic 10 investment principles that you're going to talk about. And the first one is don't fight the Fed. Now, what do you mean by this? At a time when interest rates are rising globally, what does one do? So it's been about 30 years since I've been investing. And every time I said, interest rates don't matter, central banks don't matter. And this was the first time when I look back in hindsight, we should have applied a little more mind to what was happening. So in October 2021, when we topped out, you would have seen that the Fed was making some noises about raising rates, not so eloquently as they are doing now. But we said, my company is making money. The EPS is coming. The ROE is there. The cash flow is there. They're giving me dividends. Why should I sell them? Now, the thing is, EPS is one part of stock valuation. The other part is the price earnings ratio. So when the Fed raises rates all across, your PE gets compressed. So that was the point where your company might still be making money. It might fundamentally be very good. But unless you have a stable environment, the price earnings ratio will tend to compress itself. And the fall that we have seen in the market, especially in the mid and the small caps, relates to a compression of the price earnings ratio. So price earnings ratio is not mathematics, it's more psychology, it's more perception. So that psychology and perception has been hit by the Fed raising rates. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just want to add one more thing. Three months, four months, six months down the line, the Fed will now be cutting rates. Mm -hmm. At that time, you will say, hey, this company is making losses, why should I buy it right now? Let it report good earnings. So then you will be fighting the Fed again, Fed again, because the Fed would be cutting rates and you would be looking at uh, your stocks and companies and saying that I can't see the profits, why should I buy them right now? So the big theme is you have to follow the Fed unless you're okay saying that these are my stocks, I don't want to look at the prices of five years. Then the there's no need for you to worry about the Fed. You can say, I don't care about the Fed. But if you want to look at prices every five weeks, every month, every six days, then obviously you have to pay attention to what the Fed is doing. And now that the Fed is hiking rates, at some point the rate cycle is going to turn as well. What is your, you know, what's the most prudent thing to do? So, I mean, the most prudent thing to do would be to retain your investments and hold on. No, are you, I know, uh, what would it take for the Fed to actually accelerate the rate cut process. Since so tomorrow you get a news flash that Barclays is having a problem in Europe. Suddenly the Fed would wake up from their sleep overnight and cut rates by 50 basis point, 100 basis point. So till there is no problem, the Fed would not cut rates or if the Dow Jones starts to fall and the Nasdaq starts to fall, it's bad, it's painful, but these are good things for the Fed to see. I, I read somewhere that the Fed has data for how much money each American has in his savings account and they keep raising rates till they figure out that we have exhausted all the savings account balances to that level, which means that the guys can't take it anymore. So the Fed is there to suck all the money out from you. And when their data tells them that they have really brought you to the road, that's where they will stop. 
Okay. Well, the next thing is when the market falls, earnings don't matter because everything falls. Now, you know, this goes against the basic theme, right? We talk about how uh, every bull market is uh, sort of the fund, the bedrock of a bull market is earnings. But you tell us, what is your learning? So, the earnings have a view. So, if you have a two-year view, it doesn't matter. It's Everything is going to be decided by earnings. But if you want to look at markets every day, every week, for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, then when the market falls, everything gets fall, uh, everything falls because just as I said, the price earnings ratio compresses itself. So, say a stock with a 10 rupee EPS trades at a 20 P, it's 200. And when the P comes to 15, you still have a 10 EPS, but the price is 150. Mm -hmm. And you're calling up people to figure out by hua kyo, gira kyo. Mm -hmm. Gira isli because there is a P compression. Yeah. So when the market falls, everything tends to fall. And that's the problem which we don't understand. And we take a lot of time to understand because we want a logical reason for every price move. Mm -hmm. And every price move doesn't always depend on logic. It depends on too many other things also. So what do you do at a time like this? To give you an example, right? I mean, technology stocks, great companies, super managements, they've lasted for over decades. But this year, the year gone by has been pathetic, down 20-30%. Uh, but the global tech market has also fallen. So what do you do at a time like this? So I'll give you a thing which we've researched and we saw. Stocks don't fall more than 60-65%. Okay. A few of these tech names have uh, went down 50% and then they stopped. So at 60-65%, unless the company is folding up and heading itself into bankruptcy, every stock tends to turn back, 60-65-70%. And the logic there is, uh, I mean, if you look at it globally, Meta uh, fell 70%, it recovered back. Adobe fell 70%, recovered back. Netflix fell. In India, during the COVID times, Bajaj Finance also fell and it recovered back. So beyond a point, stocks don't fall. So that's what you have to keep in mind. And if you think that America is not going to be in a recession for 20 years like Japan, obviously you have to buy the tech names. Okay, so your, that brings us to our third investment principle that companies with good earnings always bounce back. Uh, do you think IT is a good example there? Because the earnings have been good, but perhaps not as good as what the street was estimating, right? There is a slowdown in growth. Uh, so how does this sort the of fall, collaborate with yeah, that? The fall in the IT stocks has been because their EPS hasn't gone down. The price earnings ratio has compressed itself because of so much of chatter around the world about recession and global slowdown and things like that. And the thing is, if a company's EPS doesn't fall but grows 10-15%, then stocks normally see their all-time high between 12 to 18 months of that. You can go and backtest this. So if my company's EPS is not falling, the earnings are not falling, and like we suggested and we discussed a, a few minutes back, that in the long run, it's the earnings that takes yeah. over the entire thing, then obviously the earnings are going to rule the roost for the next 12 to 18 months. But you have to have staying power for that. If mm. you buy a stock and it falls 3%, 4%, 5%, you won't get a reason. There are no reasons in this market for day-to-day -day movements. We create reasons. Yeah. While you're in the newsroom, you will have to look at reasons because your viewer wants to look at and the reasons. that's reason. my job, but right? There are no, report, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But there are no reasons for day-to-day -day moves. So that's the way to look at it, that if the EPS comes through, all stock prices will reclaim their all-time highs. But if the EPS doesn't come through, I mean, Infosys from a 300 PE took six years to recover back the entire money, but at least you recovered it back. And 300 PE Infosys had when it was not paying taxes because it was a uh, under the tax holiday scheme. So mm. basically it was effectively four, 500 PE in the year 2000. So even a company with three, 400 PE gets to take out its all-time high in six, seven years. So if you can hold on, yeah. I mean, you will make money. Okay, so let me just try to play the devil's advocate here, right? You're saying that companies with good earnings will bounce back. What do you do with some of these names, say the new age tech companies? Uh, the Swiggies, uh, I mean, oh, in the listed space, the Zomatos, Nikas of the world, right? They're promising a return to profitability. They haven't displayed it just yet, especially names like Zomato. Then there are these huge large-scale layoffs at the company. But there is a hope of profitability. What do you do at a time like this? See, these are new age tech companies who have long distance earnings. So they, they are promising you of earnings about two years, three years, four years down the line. Yeah. Even a stock like Nika, for example, a stock like Paytm, for example. Right now, if I, if I can get a profitable company at a 12, 15 PE, nobody, see, this is, environment is not about risk. This environment is about being risk averse. Mm. So these companies will not do well right now, but when the Fed cuts rates, these will be the ones to recover back the fastest. Mm. But then it's very difficult to make money in those kind of companies. And this time, when the situation is 
a little uncertain and a little foggy out there, I would suggest that people should back up companies which are showing earnings rather than try to back companies that are showing promises. Okay, so stick with companies that are showing true earnings, factual earnings rather than just, just the hope of profitability. So perhaps be cautious on these uh, new age tech companies. All right, got that. Uh, the next one, stocks can fall without logic because someone else is on a margin or leverage. So this is more to do with some of these trending stocks as we call it, right? Uh, what, what does one do here? There is lo there's sometimes no logic on the way up and on the way down. What do you do? So margin is more of a cascading impact. It's like the cycle stand syndrome that I say. You push one cycle and there are 20 behind it and you suddenly find 21 cycles falling because when a price falls, X is on margin, he sells, and because X sells, price falls further and he instigates Y to sell and Y instigates Z to sell mm. because every fall in price instigates and creates this margin issues. So when you have a stock like this, you, first is for a retail investor, he would never know whether it's falling because of a margin call or whether it's falling because of an earnings disappointment. You want to give us some examples? So I can give you an example. For example, Bajaj Finance, which we would own in a small case, reported very good earnings. Mm -hmm. There was no problem with the earnings, but 27% growth. But then people figured out a way to say Ki, these earnings are not good enough. Why? Because the number of new loans hasn't gone up. Mm -hmm. So the stock fell. So when a stock like that falls and these margin call selling normally happens in FNO stocks. Mm -hmm. So when a stock falls, it creates panic and the others sell and when everyone starts to sell it falls even more. So these are times where you have to, look, if you own Bajaj for example, no recommendations, sure. you have to look at the company and say whether these earnings have met your expectations. If they have met your expectations, you are fine because somebody else is selling because of the price but you are holding the stock because of the performance of the company. Mm. So the distinction has to be made. Okay, that's a very important point actually because a lot of people have faith in the company, in the management, but sometimes growth rates also come off, right? Which is okay, I guess. But that also leads to PE compression then. Absolutely. What do you do at a time but, like uh, that? See, you look at it this way. Say you've got an uncle who's got a house, who's got a store in Chandni Chowk and you call him, Bikri kaisi chal rahi hai? And he says, Eid ki sale uti achhi hui nahi. So, Eid ki sale achhi hui nahi means you, didn't, you couldn't sell well on Eid, you, there was no demand on Diwali. Does it mean he shuts his shop down? Mm. Recession is just like that. One, two quarters, people couldn't sell, people couldn't buy, somebody was knocked out of a job. Bad, we feel bad for that guy because it's not me, I can just uh, talk about it and move on. But recession is not life and death. Recession and booms, these are basic capitalistic features. Mm. So when these things happen, you should have staying power in the market. When mm. I mean staying power, it doesn't mean that you should not be in margin, but you should not be, you should mentally be focused that I have to survive these times. Mm. If you can, so the problem is, if you own a stock, let's say for example, you own an Ultratech and it's at 7,000 and the price falls to 6,000. The first thing is either your kids or your dad or your spouse will tell you, hey, kya ke rakha? Isko yeah. becho. <laughs> whatever money is left, you take it out. Then there's added pressure at home. Yeah. Then when you go out, your friends will tell you about it. But if you have held on to a company with a five-year view, with a three-year view, these things will come and go easier said than done. Because even when my stocks fall, I call a couple of people and say, Koi khabar hai kaise? Gira kyun hai yeah. But that's a part of life. We have to carry on with that. Okay, ups and downs are a part of life and part of the equity markets, right? Got that? A very important life lessons and investment lessons. So we'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with Basant Maheshwari in just a bit with the 10 top investment lessons for 2023. Stay tuned.